Hi students, today we are going to see allylic halogenation, right? Allyl position of alkenes can be halogenated with uh, many reagents, N-bromosuccinamide, N-chlorosuccinamide, tertiary butyl hypochlorite are some of the reagents. Among this, N-bromosuccinamide, shortly uh, NBS, is one of the important reagent, okay? Uh, when bromination is done with an alkene, generally uh, the bromine will be added at, across the double bond in the presence of sunlight. So, you will be getting this product where uh, bromine will be added and the addition will be anti-addition. Whereas, if you use NBS, uh, because of its high selectivity, NBS will uh, uh, substitute a bromine atom at the allylic position. So, this is the product you will be getting and your double bond will be untouched. Let us see one more example. Here I have cyclohexene. And if I treat with uh, NBS in the non-polar solvent like carbon tetrachloride uh, at higher temperature, so uh, a bromine will be substituted in this position, no, this position. So I will get this product. Right, the reason for its uh, high selectivity is the um, release of bromine in less concentration by NBS as it dissolves poorly in non-polar solvents like carbon tetrachloride, carbon disulfide, etc. So, that is why we get a, a mono-substituted product at the allylic position, fine. So, NBS substitutes bromine at the alpha position to an aromatic ring, okay. So, this, this position is alpha position. It substitutes uh, bromine at the alpha position and also alpha position to the triple bond here and alpha position to a carbonyl group here. So, these are the products you will be getting. The bromine will be substituted at the alpha position. So, this is the product and here CH2, here, the triple bond will be untouched and here acetaldehyde will be substituted with the bromine at the alpha position. So, the free radical mechanism is suggested for the substitution. However, we are not here to substitute, I mean discuss the mechanism, but let us uh, remember the stability order of uh, free radicals, okay. So, we know that allylic free radical is more stable than tertiary free radical than secondary free radical than primary free radical. So, in the backdrop of this uh, understanding, this stability order, we are going to discuss this. We know that NBS will create a um, free radical at the allylic portion, right. So, this is the intermediate what you can expect in this reaction CH2, CH single bond, I mean free radical single bond and you have double bond. So, let me call this as 1, okay, intermediate 1. So, this will form in this reaction. But what happens, you know, this will undergo rearrangement. This pi bond will undergo homolytic fission uh, to give another one, another free radical. So, I can uh, these are all uh, resonance structures. So, CH3, we can expect that double bond will come here and you will have a primary come allylic free radical. So, this will happen, you know. So, that is why uh, when NBS uh, substitutes bromine at the allylic position, we will get two different products. The one is secondary come uh, secondary crumb allylic uh, position, okay, and this is what you will be getting plus CH3, CH double bond CH, CH2, BR. So, these two products can be expected from the bromination with the NBS of uh, butone, whatever it may be. In the absence of light, it will behave like an oxidizing agent. So, for example, you take ethanol you take ethanol and treat with NBS in the absence of uh, light, you will get CH3, CH2, that is acetaldehyde will be obtained. So, it, it is this is the reaction which can prove that NBS acts as an oxidizing agent. And uh, when we take ethanamine, when we take ethanamine and same NBS, when we treat with NBS, we get the same product, ethanol, acetaldehyde is the product. When you take secondary alcohol, like propan to all, okay. When treated with uh, NBS, it will give you propanol. 
So all these three reactions prove that NBS can also act as an oxidizing agent in the absence of light. NBS. So you have NH2 or H. So this is alpha amino acids, right? Alpha amino amino acids. When you treat this with NBS, what happens? You know, bond will be broken over here. So this carbon dioxide will be released as carbon dioxide. COO will be released as carbon dioxide and we will get ammonia. Two gases will be liberated along with an aldehyde. Let us do this problem. Here cyclohexene is given which is going to be treated with the NBS in nonpolar solvent. So A is the uh, product. A is going to be treated with alcoholic AOH and we get B. Again the same thing is going to be uh, I mean uh, repeated NBS and then alcoholic AOH. So let us find out. We know that uh, NBS will substitute a bromine at the allylic portion right. So I will get this product A will be this and alcoholic KOH is a dehydrohalogenating product. I have two hydrogens over here so surely beta elimination will happen. So this and this will be eliminated a new bond will form here. So that is your B. So you will get a cyclohexadiene is the product and again NBS we are going to treat with NBS so this position is the allylic portion for this carbon so you will get here right so C will look like a bromine will be substituted here now you have two hydrogens over here which will be removed by uh, treating with alcoholic AOH so the final product would be benzene right so this is an another uh, easiest route to or uh, circuitous route I may say uh, to prepare benzene. So here we have a pentan onal, right? Pentan onal. It is going to be treated with anhydrous aluminium oxide. We know that aluminium oxide is a dehydrating agent. So what will happen? You know, this uh, hydroxyl group will be leaving as water uh, along with this uh, hydrogen. So a new bond will form between first carbon and second carbon. So your uh, compound A will be um, pentan onine. Right. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH double bond CH2. This is your A and uh, A is going to be treated with uh, NBS. So there will be allylic substitution in this position. Okay. So B will look like uh, CH3, CH2, CH Br, then CH double bond CH2. So this will be your uh, B. Now uh, alcoholic KOH is going to be added with B which will cause uh, dehydrohalogenation. So this bromine along with this hydrogen will be leaving as HBr. So your C will look like uh, CH3, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH double bond, CH2. So there is a conjugation going to be subjected to Wurz analysis. So what will happen you know this bond will be broken and oxygen will be added here. Again this will be broken, oxygen will be added here. So we will get uh, acetaldehyde plus uh, uh, CHO, CHO this compound plus uh, HCHO. So you will get three products. So when propanamide is treated with the alkaline solution of bromine, Hoffman bromide reaction will happen. So this carbonyl group will be removed as carbon dioxide. You will get uh, uh, ethanamine. So CH3, CH2, NH2 is the uh, is your A. And when we treat uh, this ethanamine with NBS in the absence of light, we get a carbonyl compound CH3, CHO. So B is your acetaldehyde. When acetaldehyde is treated with uh, dilute alkaline solution, Alder type of condensation will happen. So the final product will look like uh, CH3, CH double bond after dehydration, right? So this is a but 2NL. This is the final product. Thank you guys. Happy learning.